friends so good to have you here again it's another sunday morning woo and i'm so happy to be in the presence of god i want you to go get your bibles get your jotter and a pen gather your siblings around as we we'll go into today's service i want to do that quickly are we ready to go now let's close our eyes as we say a word of prayer in jesus name Father, we say thank you for today. Thank you for giving us the grace to be alive today. Thank you for daddy. Thank you for mommy. Thank you for all of our brothers and our sisters. Thank you for every young boy and girl in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So right now we're going to go into praise and worship. And when we are done, we'll come back for today's lesson. We have a very interesting topic for you today. I want you to make sure you dance and dance and dance and dance and dance i will see you right after the praise and worship session You really danced you know it's a good thing when they say let us come into the house of the lord we come into his presence with singing and what dancing rejoicing and the bible says again i say rejoice twice that we should rejoice at all times so right now 
We're going into our lesson. Our topic for today is the story of Joseph. The story of Joseph. How many of us knows Joseph in the Bible? Mm, so what can you remember about Joseph? I know so many people say, oh yeah, his dad made him a coat that has so many colors on it, right? Good. His dad loved him so much. He was, he was the favorite of just Jacob's children, Jacob's sons. And Jacob made him a coat with beautiful colors, lots of colors on it. So today we're going to look at the story of Joseph making a fame and a wise decision. The story of Joseph making a fame and a wise decision. I want you to pick your Bibles and let's go over to Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39 from verse 7 to 33. Genesis chapter 39 verse 7. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. With, with me in charge, he told her, My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master was withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day, he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by the cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, This Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept the cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him the story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, she left the cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, his wife told him, saying, this is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in everything he did. Wow, what an interesting story. The goal for our lesson today is to encourage kids to, to, to be firm when saying no to sin. We're encouraging you today to be firm when saying no to sin. We can see that the Bible story will summarize this quickly. Joseph was the first son of Rachel. He was the eleventh and the most loved son of Jacob. Number two, his father gave him a coat of many colors because he loved him more than his other children. Three, Joseph's brothers were angry, jealous, and hated him and planned to get rid of him. The next point is that later they sold him to a group of Ishmaelites who carried him to Egypt. In Egypt, he was sold as a slave to Potiphar, an officer who worked for Pharaoh and was the captain of the guard. What did Joseph do wrong? Nothing. He was just loved by his father, which is something he did not make happen. His father just loved him. And I believe why Jacob did this was because of the love he had for Rachel. And then Rachel had the second son. Remember Rachel's story? Rachel died. 
after having Benjamin. You know, and Jacob poured his love for Rachel, being that Rachel was his beloved, on Joseph. And Joseph happens to be the beloved son of Jacob. And then Jacob made Joseph a coat of many colors. And his brothers were angry. Yes, they were angry, but they would have expressed their anger to their dad. But rather, they decided to take laws into their hands by selling their own brother. Can you imagine that? And they sold Joseph into slavery. After selling Joseph to slavery, they sold him to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites proceeded and sold Joseph over to, as a slave in Egypt. And Potiphar, who ha which happens to be one of um, Pharaoh's guards, bought Joseph as a slave. But Potiphar observed something about Joseph that God blesses whatever he does. Joseph was so prosperous. He had favor. You know that kind of favor that Jesus had? That the Bible says Jesus Christ grew in favor with God and with men. Joseph had that same favor. He had favor with everyone he comes in contact with. And then one day, his master's wife came and said, come lie with me. Joseph was just a young boy. And said Joseph should do something that was abominable to God. And Joseph was like, I can't do this against God, against the God of my father, Jacob. Oh, I believe Potiphar's wife would have said, who cares about the God of your father? You're in Egypt. Come on, get real and just do this. Uh, Jacob, Joseph said, no, I will not do it. And the Bible says, day after day, Potiphar's wife kept on disturbing Joseph. Every day she kept on saying, Joseph, are you ready to yield to what I requested for? And Joseph's answers was, where a firm no, N-O, there was no compromise. Joseph did not say, okay, I'll think about it, but I don't want to steal. It's not good to tell lies. Okay, I'll think about it. No, Joseph just said, no, it's wrong, it's wrong. And then this woman planned something bad against Joseph. One day, Joseph came into the house. There were no servants around, nobody to witness the scene. She grabbed Joseph and said, come sleep with me. And Joseph said, I will not do such thing. And Joseph pulled himself out of her grip and forgot his coat with her and ran away. And she screamed and alerted every maid in the house and the other servants and said, this is what Joseph did. And nobody could testify that, oh, Joseph is actually a good boy, you know. And told her husband, her husband was so angry and was like, Joseph, I gave you everything in my household. I don't even know how many, how many uh, camel I have. I don't know. I don't, it, it, uh, Potiphar did not take record of anything in his house since Joseph came in. Because Joseph did everything excellently well, except for the meal Potiphar eats. And apart from his wife, you know, and Potiphar was angry, so angry that he told Joseph to leave his house, arrested Joseph, and put Joseph in the prison where the king's prisoners were kept. And guess what? God was with Joseph. Because Joseph made a firm decision. He made a, he made a very powerful decision to say, I will not compromise. No, I will not yield to what you are saying. He told Potiphar's wife, I know you are my master, but what you are saying is wrong, and I will not do that. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. Even though Joseph was a slave, he was hardworking. And that same hardworking he took into the prison. He became so hardworking in the prison that the keepers of the prisoners had to make Joseph the leader again. You can imagine. You know, God's gift in his life, even though Potiphar's wife lied, God never took his gifts out of his life, out of his life. So even if friends lie against you, even if friends force you to do what is wrong, you give a firm decision, make a firm decision by saying no to what is wrong. You know, and the Bible says we should flee. Do you know what it is to flee? You know, you how many of us have watched Tom and Jerry? You know when Jerry wants to flee 
when Tom is coming after Jerry, is zip. That is what it means to flee. Very fast. You know, faster than a cheetah. Zip. Flee every appearance of evil. That's what God is telling every young boy and girl today. Do not compromise. Don't compromise. And then what happened is that Joseph understood God. Joseph was in a strange land, but Joseph still had relationship with his God. He brought his God to Potiphar's wife. Just that Potiphar's wife was not ready to accept God at that time. He told her that, I cannot do this against the God of my father. That means Joseph was in good communication with God. He was prayerful. Even though he was far from his father, he was far from his siblings, he was a slave in a faraway land, he still remembers the God of his father. And he knew that the God of his father says no to such acts. So Joseph was also very bold. These are things we learned from Joseph. He was very bold to say, no, I'm not ready to compromise. I won't. And he did not. So I believe that Joseph might have made other excuses, but Potiphar's wife refused to answer. Potiphar's wife actually did not know the God of Israel. He knew whatever gods they served in Egypt, which was not God in heaven. So Joseph spoke to Potiphar's wife as first about God. And then when he got to the prison, he still testified about God to the prisoners. He interpreted their dreams. And trust me, apart from the prisoner that died, I believe all other prisoners would have given their life to God, to Christ. They would know that, yes, there is something about this, this young Hebrew boy. There's something about him, you know. So the lessons from Joseph's story is that one, Whatever situation you find yourself, you should always allow your character to shine. The first lesson for today is that whatever situation you find yourself, you must always allow your character to shine through. Two, a bad situation is not an excuse to be lazy. It's not an excuse to be rude. It's not an excuse to be disrespectful. It's not an excuse to be disobedient. It's not an excuse to be selfish or to be uncertain or to be uncaring. You can choose to love, you can choose to be hardworking, respectful, and obedient in good and bad times. The next point is that God was with Joseph in the house of Potiphar while he served as a slave, which means that Joseph was always communicating with God. Wherever you are, God will always be with you in good and in bad times, but God will always be with you. So always communicate with God. Are you in school? Are you at home? God is with you. Your parents might not be there. Your siblings might not be there. There might be no uncle or auntie from home, but God is with you. So always be in good communication with your God and he will tell you what is wrong and what is right. So Joseph was constantly harassed. He could have said yes to the demands of Potiphar's wife, but he kept on saying what? No. So you keep saying no to evil. Joseph honored and respected God, even though he knew if Joseph would have done it, nobody would have known. Potiphar's wife would have covered up for him and even praised him before the master. But he said no, even though no eyes are watching, I can't do this. And he refused. You should understand that when you break God's laws, you sin against God. Joseph did not break God's laws and he did not sin. And that was how Joseph rose to become the first prime minister in Egypt. The next man to Pharaoh. That Pharaoh, just like what Potiphar did in his house, God had a bigger plan for Joseph. God just needed Joseph to pass that test. And the moment Joseph passed the test, he moved over into the king's prison, from the king's prison, he became the next prime minister in Egypt. God is always faithful to his promises. I want us just to look at our memory verse for today. Our memory verse is taken from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. I want you to say Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. 
It says, my son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. Very good. Let's take it again. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. And it says, my son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. It's as simple as that. If sinful men entice you, don't give in to them. So with that, we've come to the end of today's lesson. I hope we've really learned something. Always stand firm in your decision to say no to evil. So right now, before I say our prayers, if today is your birthday, all through this week, this new week, if your birthday is from today, Sunday, the Saturday, I want you to jump up and dance and enjoy the song from us to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Welcome back. I hope you really danced and we'll pray for you today that you will see many more years. You are a blessing to your generation. You are a blessing to generations that are yet unborn. God bless you. You are blessed. You are highly favored by God. And we'll pray as we end our lessons that the presence of the Lord will continue to remain with you. Just as Joseph was firm in his decisions, you will be firm in your decisions as young boys and young girls. You will always say no to evil. For in Jesus' name of pray, amen. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I'll see you again next time. Bye.